Next up is Bago Nano Medical with CEO Mats Hansen. Welcome Mats. Thank you very much. A uh, warm welcome to this presentation of Spaga Nanomedical, uh, a Swedish public clinical stage nanomedical company developing precision diagnostics and medicine for life-threatening and disabling diseases. My name is Matt Sansen, and today I'm going to walk you through our technology, the evidence that our platform works, uh, our pipeline projects and a uh, few words about the market they represent. And finally, where we are currently at and where we are heading. So, to start with, we have developed a platform material for precision medicine that can be used for both diagnostics and therapeutics. Uh, the material is based on targeting to tumors uh, based on the uh, physiological mechanism enhanced permeability and retention, which uh, develops as, as a growing tumor surrounds itself with capillaries for nutritional supply. Using this mechanism for physiological targeting of functional nanoparticles, opens up for precision diagnostics and medicine based on optimized nanoparticles that accumulate selectively in tumors. And does this work? Yes, it does. We have now recently proved with interim clinical results that our platform material do actually selectively accumulate in human solid tumors. In this case, it's breast cancer tumors uh, from the ongoing clinical trial with our MRI uh, se uh, selective contrast agent, Spagopix. And we have seen consistent and very good uh, contrast enhancement in all so solid tumors that has been stu studied in, in these patients. So we're very happy to see that the preclinical results that we have had from before with Spogopix now translates very nicely into human use. This opens up not only for diagnostic purposes, but also for therapeutic purposes with our other project, Tumorad, which you can see in the middle here, represented with SPECT imaging of a mouse with a, a solid tumor in the flank, where we see good, good uh, and appropriate accumulation of our material. Uh, so we now have come to a stage with our projects and with our platform that where we are very, very confident, actually I've never been this confident in the technology platform, that it works for human use. We have also seen that it's, the material is very safe to give to, to patients. So with this in mind, we are now very much focusing in on taking the platform fo forward for therapeutic use. And, and now I'm going to talk about Tumorad, our ra radionuclide therapy project for uh, cancer treatment. The concept is, is quite simple, actually. Uh, we have developed optimized nanoparticles consisting of three uh, parts. There is a polymeric core, which binds uh, elements uh, of certain types very, very uh, tightly. In this case, we are using the isotope lutetium-177, a clinically proved isotope that's already being used today for cancer treatment. On top of this, we have a uh, surface uh, layer, which is uh, giving the particles the right properties when it comes to circulation and targeting of the tumors. Uh, so three parts, and the clinical concept is also quite st straightforward. We supply our particles in one tube, and the isotope is provided in another tube. Those two are mixed together at the hospital or centrally, uh, and then shipped to the hospital and given to the patient intravenously. The particle then circulates in the body and accumulates physiologically in the tumors where they irradiate them and, and hopefully brings a, a good treatment effect. 
So looking at the pipeline of radionuclide therapies, systemic radionuclide therapies, that is, we can see that if we divide the field in two dimensions based on radiation type and targeting type, there is a, a, a bunch of products and pipeline uh, projects uh, using beta radiations uh, like lutetium-177 uh, and biological targeting by means of peptides or antibodies. Uh, the most recent examples are Lutatherium pluvictu by Novartis uh, that was approved recently for neuroendocrine tumors and prostate cancer use respectively. This is a growing field. Uh, one can say that there is a new generation of radionuclides coming since, well, uh, the past decade or so. It's been known for a long time that radioactivity is a very good means of treating cancer, but now we're seeing new products coming uh, at a ma much faster pace than, than was seen before. There are a few using alpha radiation and biological targeting, but our product, LU177SN201, is quite alone and quite unique in, in the sense that it uses beta radiation and this physiological targeting mechanism uh, that I spoke about before. So we see that there is certainly a need. And, and the main advantage, of course, of physiological targeting is that we can target several different types of tumors. We are not uh, locked up to a certain tumor type based on uh, antibody binding or peptide binding. So th the differentiation point with Tumorad is that we have selectivity for malignant lesions and in fact the EPR effect that opens for our physiological targeting is more pronounced in aggressively growing tumors and metastasis and is known to be present already at when a, when a tumor or metastasis is around one to two millimeters in size. So we're able to target uh, those as well. Using radioactivity is a proven treatment concept. Uh, lutetium is a clinically effective isotope as can be seen from the products that are already on the market. And in our case, working with functional nanoparticles makes us independent of drug delivery, which is otherwise quite historically standard in, in nanomedicine, i.e. the particles you're using is supposed to deliver a chemotherapeutic load or something like that. That's not the case with our particles. The concept is also optimized for uh, patient selection because using radioactivity gives an inherent possibility to use companion diagnostic by imaging. Uh, so lutetium can be used on its own for, for instance for SPECT imaging which gives us an advantage that, that we early on can follow the drug through the body and see where it ends up and it gives very nice biodistribution data uh, to, to actually control that, that the dose we are giving ends up in the tumors. Radioactivity is known to be very suitable for combination therapy. Radioactivity can open up the tumors for other treatment types. So combination concepts are very, very interesting to explore with Tumorad going forward as well. Uh, and we are actually doing preclinical studies right now including combination arms in, in uh, ovarian cancer. The logistics with radioactive drugs should not be underestimated and we have started early on to, to work on the concept and, and to make sure that we have adequate providers making, us, making it possible to, to use either central labeling, central uh, distribution of, of radioactive drug or making it possible to do local labeling at the hospital pharmacies uh, with our particles and the isotope. So if we look at, to the market possibility and medical need, we can see that there, there is a number of tumor types that are known to express the EPR effect in human body. And you can see there is a, a range of tumors from large to small. We're in par particular interested right now in ovarian cancer because it brings an opportunity to, 
to uh, go for an orphan drug designation and an potentially accelerated clinical development route. And, and looking into ovarian cancer, it is actually, being a small indication, still the valuation is very attractive uh, for Tumorad in this indication. So if we look at the valuation right now, which is around 43 million euros, and this is before we enter clinical trials, we can see that going forward, it rapidly increases, and, and finally, the target, the, uh, the to uh, um, total addressable market is is quite substantial. And again, this is only one orphan indication, and tumorad, as we said, can or have the potential to be used in in other larger indications as well. So I'm going to switch to Spagopix, our diagnostic project. It's based on the same type of particles. They are a bit smaller in this case because we want a different type of circulation pattern or pharmacokinetics with these particles. Uh, they are built around the three elements just as before, a polymeric core, a surface layer that makes them uh, Im immunologically inert. And in this case we are using manganese as the element that gives a very good contrast in MRI. And again, very simple clinical con concept. Uh, manganese is paramagnetic and it's uh, known for a long time giving a very good uh, signal in MRI imaging. The functional nanoparticles are optimized for targeting and retention in tumors. And we have shown that this works. We have shown in breast cancer patients that, that we get very good contrast enhancement, which is a measure actually of accumulation, selective accumulation of, of particles in the tumors. Uh, and that we get very good contrast also in the liver, which was quite expected, but more interestingly in the pancreas, uh, which we're going to come back to as well. So, so this opens up for use both in breast cancer, but also uh, other cancer indications. Again, we have selectivity for malignant lesions, uh, which gives the opportunity to reduce false positives, which is now a big problem in, in MRI for cancer diagnostics. We can reduce the scanning time because we have a long circulation of the particles, which, which gives the opportunity to actually administer the patient outside the MRI room. Uh, and it also provides for flexible imaging since we know that we have good contrast for several hours compared to the contrast agents that are used today, which leaves the body within, let's say, 10 minutes or so. We're also using manganese, which is a big difference from the gadolinium-based agents that are used today and that are totally dominating the market. And manganese, in contrast to, to gadolinium, is an essential element that, that uh, is supposed to be in the body, which gadolinium is not. So the ongoing trial confirms the mechanism and safety of, the, of our concept in human breast tumors. Uh, and also, uh, as I mentioned, interestingly enough, in, in the pancreas. So what we did, did now was open the trial, the ongoing trial, to patients with known pancreatic cancer as well to see if we can provide a broadened scope already at this very early stage of clinical development. But the most important point is that we now have clinical proof of concept for our platform technologies which opens up not only for diagnostics but also for therapeutics. So to summarize, we, I, I'm extremely happy to be here today, and as I said before, I've never been this confident in our platform technology. We are now rapidly uh, progressing Tumorad to clinical development stage, which means we are, we are aiming to start the first clinical phase one slash two trial by the end of this year. And as I said, we are going for an orphan indication. Uh, in the phase two part of this trial and potentially other indications as well in the form of a basket trial. We're also actively evaluating uh, partnering opportunities for Spogopix and that's a process that's ongoing and we'll, we hope to be able to come back to that soon as well. And in, in the sense of that, we are also broadening the scope for Spogopix in different tumors. 
So with that, I, I leave you with this image and uh, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, will ovarian cancer be the main focus in the clinical development of Tumored? Well, the, the first part will be a fa phase one dose escalation trial with imaging to see that we get the actual uh, accumulation in the right places in the body. And then the second part, the phase two part, gives us the opportunity to have different indications where ovarian is certainly one of those that is, are the most interesting. So yes, it will be uh, one of the focuses. You mentioned uh, orphan drug designation in ovarian cancer. What benefits can this bring for us, body? Well, first of all, it, it gives uh, publicity. It gives uh, a, a possibility to get early uh, assistance from the uh, regulators, uh, particularly in, in the US, where we can seek orphan drug status already based on preclinical data. So it gives an, kind of an early interaction with the uh, regulators over there. Uh, and then, then, of course, we, we can we have the opportunity to do accelerated development if we get good efficacy signs already in, in the first trial. But potentially, it, it it's enough with a one pivotal trial after that. So yes, it, it's uh, it's certainly interesting for us. And what needs to be done before you can uh, obtain orphan drug designation? Well, uh, for, for orphan status in the US, we, we need positive preclinical data. And we have a quite ambitious program ongoing right now in, ovarian, in an ovarian cancer model where we are testing Tumorad uh, as a monotherapy, but also in combinations with standard treatments in that indications, PARP inhibitors, for, for instance. So based on positive outcome of that, we intend to file an orphan drug application uh, later this year. Thank you for your emails today in the studio. Thank you very much.